Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. John Kelly Profiler here, and welcome. Welcome to a special viewer's choice video on the Zodiac Killer. Today, you're going to go on a journey. We're asking you to come and join with us as we try to figure out who the Zodiac Killer is. Today, you're going to be listening to me, and you're going to be listening to Frank Adamson, retired chief of detectives, King County Sheriff's Department in the state of Washington. He was the longest running commander of the Green River Task Force. And because of his efforts, and a lot of the efforts of the great men and women dead and alive of the Green River Task Force, Gary Ridgeway's DNA was saved approximately 20 years, and he was arrested as DNA testing became more sophisticated. So Frank is a major reason why Gary Ridgeway was convicted of the Green River murders. And keep in mind, at that point in time, and still till today, the largest serial killer manhunt in U.S. history. Also, another one of my stock team members who's going to be on the show today is Dr. Edward Mursky. Dr. Edward Mursky is like a walking psychological encyclopedia. Dr. Mursky is not a PhD. Dr. Mursky is a PsyD. Okay, his doctorate is specifically in psychology, and he was mentored and trained by a very good friend of ours who's passed away, Dr. Arnold Lazarus, one of the best psychologists in the world, and who I also had the privilege of knowing and getting a little bit of mentoring from. So Dr. Mursky is our expert on the psychology of the Zodiac. Frank Adamson, over 200 homicides under his belt, capturing the Green River Killer. He's really more than a homicide detective. As far as I'm concerned, Frank's a criminologist all the way. And yours truly will be involved on both ends of the spectrum, with the criminal end and with the psych end. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. The other part of this is, because this was done over Skype, because we're in different parts of the country, so we're going to be a little grainy. Might be a little hard to hear, but I will tell you, this is rich, clinically rich in content on the Zodiac Killer. So it's very important if you want to participate to listen to the whole segment. You don't have to do it all at once, but when I tell you we've hit on some different things in here, some different issues, some different dynamics that you may not have been aware of before. You're gonna hear them today. And this is the first time very few people have ever participated or been involved in a stock team profiling discussion. You are gonna be on the inside today. So thanks again for tuning in. We always appreciate you. We can't thank you enough for your support. And on with the show. Frank and Eddie, you know, something we've talked about, we've been focused on, we believe this is a white male between the ages of 25 to 35 years old in that ballpark area when he started committing these murders. Do you guys agree with that? That's something we talked about. And tell me why. John, I believe that he was between uh, 25 and 35. Generally, when um, serial murders start, 
um, killing. They're they're generally around that age. I don't believe that the first crime that we're talking about here um, was his first crime. But so I would put him a little older than 25, but but not as old as 35. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, because we really never know. Find out about the first ones lots of times. Eddie, any uh, any thoughts from you on why we believe 25 to 35? No, it seems very reasonable considering uh, the history of most serial killers. You know, if we can generalize from from their, their patterns of behavior, that would be uh, very accurate, 25 to 35. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, now we're going to move towards uh, primary intakes, and we agreed, and we haven't done as a very visually oriented person. That means his primary intake sense, the way he accesses the world through his eyes, he's extremely visually oriented. Eddie, do you want to talk about why you believe that? Yeah, based on uh, all the evidence we have about different uh, crime scenes, different uh, places he was at, you know, the victims, how he went about, you know, performing his his crimes. Um, We'd have to say he was a primary visual person. and out of the five senses that we have, uh, you know, the two biggest ones certainly are visual and auditory. Um, but uh, it seems like he uh, used that particular sense, the visual sense, to you know to to his maximum uh, capacity in committing the crimes. So we'd have to, you know conclude that that's that's his primary intake sense and like you said that's how he um, primarily uh, goes about uh, doing his business in the world Frank how about you tell me why you think he's so visual well I think the way he perpetrated the crimes indicates that he's he was quite visual um, he obviously um, Picked couples. He, um, in in every case that we know of, he killed the woman. Um, I think that, you know, he probably in his life, and he put that to work, and that's basically vis-a-vis visualization. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Hold it there. The other thing we were talking about was his functioning. We believe that he's extremely structured with sophistication. And most definitely above average intelligence. So we have him as a very structured individual, certainly some pretty good sophistication and above average intelligence. Do you want to talk about that first, Eddie? Dr. Mursky, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, well, again, based on his uh, um, behavior patterns and even his taunting the police and, and the news uh, paper people, the uh, you know, it would seem like he's uh, above average intelligence. Um, his uh, ability to do encryption. Um, which we may get into later, and they might have learned that in the uh, the Navy or a different branch of the military. Um, but he, um, you know, uh, certainly above average. He might not be uh, a genius. Uh, I said he might think he is, <laughs> you know, but there's always some narcissism involved. In oh, yeah, that's sure is. Um, but uh, I-, I would say he's... Uh, you know, probably above average intelligence. And most people would, would know that who knew this uh, person. Um, they would say, yeah, he's, he's pretty bright guy. He's a very smart guy. Um, they wouldn't uh, necessarily believe he's a Zodiac killer, but they would say he's, he's uh, 
you know, pretty sharp guy, pretty bright guy. He probably likes to uh, um, let people know he's pretty bright. Yeah, like that dripping narcissism that you talked about. Yeah, we talked about it in other cases. Yeah, just kind of, it always has a tendency to leak out and drip out somehow, some way. Um, you know, this guy obviously uh, did it mainly through his taunting the police and uh, uh, sending the letters to the uh, you know, different um, newspapers and um, you know, taunting them to figure out his his code. Um, so um, yeah, and he's uh, you know got some levels of sophistication there, uh, more so than most people. And can even say he's like has some obsessive compulsive traits. Probably uh, might qualify as obsessive compulsive personality. Um, if you want a, uh, a DSM-5 uh, diagnosis, you might come close to that. You know, all the traits that are uh, characteristics that are listed there. I got to jump to Frank, Eddie. Sure, sure. Frank, tell me what you see as far as him being extremely structured with sophistication and above average intelligence. Why is he that way? Well, I think that um, his 1968 crimes were not his first crimes. And I think that serial murderers generally learn from previous crimes. Um, he, in this case, picks a very remote area. Um, he comes in and he sees essentially a couple there. He's, what he's doing is he's casing it. He leaves and then he comes back and he confronts them and and he kills them he was very it was he he knew that he probably uh, wouldn't be seen by witnesses or that the police would stop by while he was committing this act he, so obviously he has some knowledge of police procedures he knows a lot about weapons guns <laughs> knives even bombs um all of this tends to tell me that he had at least a lot of criminal sophistication. Um, it's possible that um, in his past, he uh, either had some very negative contact with the police or um, in fact, served some time in an institution, a jail, a mental ward, something like that. Great. Frank. You know, this is really a question for you because you're the expert in this area. We believe that this guy, this Zodiac, this killer, was really experienced with weapons and a flashlight. And we've talked about, you know, probably more about after uh, we saw the a uh, person of interest in Green River killer case get arrested, and we found out he was a cop. But, I mean, and I'm not saying Zodiac was a cop, but this experience with weapons, um, you know, kind of uh, shocking his victims with the flashlight. I mean, these look like methods that would be used pretty much by the police or the military or maybe security in some way. What do you think about that? Uh, was he, uh, Where could he possibly have got that experience? Well, I think, you know, um, police use lights and flashlights, um, especially at night, um, so that a suspect that they're stopping um, can't see them. And obviously, the killer in this case used a flashlight um, to blind uh, the people that he's attacking. And so that shows that um, he either came upon it by himself through um, his experience as a hunter. He may have even hunted at night, or he got that from understanding what police do. You know, he could have been stopped by police in something like uh, shined in his eyes, which lots of people experience um, uh, from the 
mere traffic stop. So there's a number of ways you can pick it up. It wouldn't necessarily have to be vis-a-vis um, -vis, um, experience with a, with a police force, but um, he probably had some. Some type of training. Yeah. All righty, now the other question I have is something we've gone over. What was this guy's motivator? What motivated this guy to kill these couples in Lover's Lane or out of the way places where they were trying to be romantic? And I truly believe it was about jealous rage that this guy's just so filled with anger, so filled with jealousy because he can't have a relationship. And I really believe that's because he's socially awkward, especially among women. But Eddie, I'm talking about jealous rage being his primary motivator in the beginning of the murder. You want to talk about that, Eddie? Yeah, it would seem very reasonable that that's a, um, a primary motivator for his, you know, type of behavior. Obviously, it's a extreme overreaction to, uh, you know, you know, we all have feelings of jealousy at times. You all get angry at times, but. This guy is a obviously severe outlier when it comes to how he manifests it, how he expresses it. <clears throat> you know, when you, you know, pre-plan killings and, um, um, you know, getting your anger and, and jealousy out and by those methods, it's uh, obviously very, very extreme. Um, but I believe we had talked about the uh, the fact that he his own personal life is probably a, um, a mess and he's very uh, uh, jealous of almost everybody he looks at and sees that do have you know good relationships and he just um, doesn't have the proper skills doesn't have the proper um, uh, you know traits that you need to to uh, obtain a relationship, maintain a relationship. So, uh, um, but he acts out in, in the most uh, egregious way, the most antisocial way possible, which is through uh, murder. Yeah, horrific, horrific. Yeah, it's, you can't be too, too much more horrific than, than what he did, obviously. Um, um, but uh, I'm sure his own... Uh, personal life was uh, very, very unsatisfactory. And, um, you know, this is how he uh, acted it out. Yeah, um, antisocial personality disorder. Frank, what do you say? Yeah, I think this is a man that hates young women um, and, and good looking young women. And I think he's probably sexually inadequate. Um, his pickerism or his stabbing of the women multiple times is probably his sex act as opposed to um, a consummation with, with the victim in some way. So I, I think, he, uh, I, I don't think um, he was out necessarily to kill the men. They were there and it's more complicated when you have two individuals that you're attacking and uh, but he always um, killed the female. Some of the males survived, so it kind of indicates where his focus was. His focus was primarily the female. Excellent, excellent, because that's what I see too. Guys, you know, the other thing that we talked about, we looked at the primary motivator, which we felt was jealous rage. Very socially awkward man, especially with uh, women. And then all of a sudden, we see this take a turn where it looks like his primary motivation for killing the cab driver in San Francisco around the Presidio seemed to be about fame. I mean, this guy is completely focused on getting at his jealous rage and killing couples in lover's lanes or in out of, out of uh, uh, areas, areas that are uh, 
uh, not easily accessed. Um, I, I, I guess keeping it in lover's lanes. But the bottom line is now we have him killing a cab driver, ripping his shirt off, piece of his shirt off, sending it to the press. Now it looks like his primary motivation is fame. Now he wants to be famous. Now all he wants to do is, you know, uh, communicate with the media, all forms of media, and try and scare everybody and become a very infamous or famous character. What do you say about that, Eddie? Well, yeah, it's it's that killing certainly deviated quite dramatically from um, his previous work, his previous uh, killings. Um, my think is maybe there was something else going on at the time that was taking attention away from him. Maybe he had to do something, you know, kind of quick and um, to get himself back on the front page. And um, that's what he like, kind of more impulsively did. You know, the previous ones, I think, were more pre-planned and uh, visually rehearsed. This one seemed to be, um, you know, an aberration for him. He was uh, a little off the, the scale. Um, but um, yeah, I think he, he had to get himself back in the headline somehow, some way. And uh, this is what he chose, the, uh, you know, that uh, poor victim, the cab driver. Um, you know, and then as far as we know, that was his last killing. Am I right? That, that was his last uh, one that we know of for sure. Yeah, that is the one uh, that he kind of more or less uh, disappeared. He disappeared pretty much after that as far as actual killing goes. And I think that had a lot to do with being seen uh, by the kids up on the balcony uh, at that uh, at that particular crime scene. I, I think that had something to do with it. They ran into a couple cops. I don't know how true that is or not. Frank, what do you say about that? What do you say about, you know, this new primary motivator being fame, fame induced for, for murder. Well, I think in, in this case, he let his ego get in his way. Um, I, I agree with Eddie that he wanted the publicity. I also think he wanted to um, uh, stick it to the police. So um, unlike many of his other crimes, this wasn't a remote area. It was an it was right down, down in San Francisco, although it was a foggy, foggy night, and he was seen by witnesses. And uh, as he's leaving the scene, he's actually um, stopped by a cops, and um, they asked the cops asked him if he'd seen anyone in, in that area, and he said, "Yeah, he he saw a guy with a gun." Now the cops should have caught him at that time. They 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 made a huge mistake, and uh, the the fact is that he learned from that. That's that's the other thing that I've been saying about serial murders, and that's why I said he had some sophistication earlier. He's learning. That's why he didn't do another one like this. I mean, it was it was a real uh, uh, screw up from from my perspective. Yeah, and, close call, close call. And, but but like I say, his ego overruled his common sense. The ego got the best of him. That's what usually that's what usually does him in. You know, the other thing that we've been looking at is he extremely familiar with the areas where he's hunted humans and where he's killed his victims. And I believe this guy scoped those areas out. I believe he's extremely familiar with them. What do you guys think? Frank, let me start you off with that. Do you think he's familiar with the areas that he killed in? Oh, I think he definitely is familiar with those areas. He's comfortable in them. He obviously lives close to those areas. He's been there many, many times. Um, e even in the, the cab killing, uh, the fact that he was um, not shook up when the police stopped him, you know, I mean, he just remained calm. 
it kind of indicates to me that not only is he familiar with all of these places, but this is a guy that doesn't have um, any sense of guilt. Um, he's just he's he's just a person that um, can do horrendous things and not um, in any way be affected by them. That's it's it's amazing, Eddie. What do you say? Was he familiar? You believe he was really familiar with these areas? I think he scoped them out pretty well, to be honest with you. I don't think oh, he, this guy missed a beat. Yeah, there's no doubt. He, in my mind, that he he, he visited them, you know, and uh, um, you know it all goes together. What we said before, he's structured and sophisticated, and he, you know, he wants to. You know, give himself the uh, greatest percentage of of uh, um, pulling off the crimes well, of succeeding. So the more you scope out your area and you're familiar with it, you're increasing your chances of being very successful. Of his uh, his fantasy. I mean, a lot of you know we haven't talked about him much, but but all these people they. A lot of stuff goes on in their fantasy and their imagery, and uh, he probably had a whole, the whole area cased out visually, and uh, um, you know, and he was successful. It, it did uh, for him. It did prove successful. Yeah, he got it. He got away with it. They haven't uh, caught him yet. It's holy. He there. thought and believes that he's a hunter, and I think probably. In his youth, he hunted animals, um, maybe small animals at one time. He probably was a deer hunter. Um, and I think he looks at hunting human beings as, you know, the most difficult animal to hunt. And obviously, as he's going after the various women that he shot, he sees them <coughs> as his trophies. And, you know, that's indicative of his, his hunting. Um, whether he's a fisherman or not, I, 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 I have no real concept of that. Uh, he possibly can. Sometimes they go together. But um, a deer hunter, big game hunter, he, he definitely was. Yeah, he's definitely, I, I truly believe, a... Uh... A definite hunter, um, you know, his expertise with weapons, you know, he's learned that somewhere. And, of course, we know practice makes perfect. So, yeah, he's he's, he's hunted other things. He's killed, And we know what these serial killers are. Grow up with animals. Eddie, what do you say? Hey, he's a hunter? I'd say it's a good likelihood. Very good likelihood. To, again, considering... Uh, how he committed the crimes, the weapons used. Um, um, I'd say, you know, very good probability that he has some some background, special skills, because um, he certainly um, used them with the crimes. Had to learn these uh, tactics and these um, behaviors somewhere. So uh, hunting would have been a good uh, a good place. Yeah, he's a he's like a deliberate hunter of human beings. Okay, we'll hold it. You know, when we're looking at this guy, we know that he's into ciphering. And I've got to believe, you know, with this guy's narcissism and wanting to show off at some point that other people would know or he'd make it known to people that know him or have associated with him that he's into ciphering like he's he's the big guy when it comes to ciphering i believe other people know him for this as you would call it eddie dripping of narcissism his narcissism dripping go ahead eddie dr mersky tell me what you think about that yeah well his you know belief that he's superior and uh Probably several ways, but maybe one of the main ways is through his 
deciphering uh, skills. Um, and certainly you don't want to just keep it to yourself that you think you're good or uh, he may actually be, be very good, you know. Um, but uh, you want to share it. You want the public uh, to uh, know that uh, he's got these special abilities, special skills. So um, um, it, you know, I'm not sure if there are clubs out there or there are you know, organizations that um, you know uh, get together periodically, either in person or through the internet. Um, but I think it would probably be, uh, um, you know, one of the leaders or think he's one of the leaders of, of a, if there was a group of uh, people that are, you know, as a hobby doing ciphering. Um, so he, that, that could be one way of uh, trying to identify who he is. If there's anybody out there that uh, is into, um, you know, encryption and, uh the, the, this might help them jar their memory a little bit or uh, um, say, yeah, I knew somebody who, uh, you know, it seems to uh, fit the profile. Again, this is just another one other dimension of the entire profile, but it could be a very important one. Very important. Very important. Frank, what say you? Well, I think uh, he's th this individual is a loner. And I think siphoning allowed him to broadcast what he's doing to the world without ultimately indicating who he really was. You know, he plays with that. And, and maybe, in fact, you know, his name is in the ciphering, but he didn't believe that anyone would ever be able to, in, in my opinion, be able to... Um, break his code you know i mean he's superior to everybody else and and i think that's where he's coming from yeah yeah and and i agree and we all know that everybody that thinks they're so superior usually feels a little inferior too so that that fits the bill well here's the real question we know we think we know why this guy was killing he was a serial killer the major question is, why did this guy stop killing? Because if we can figure out why he stopped killing, we might be able to figure out who he is. Now, if the primary motivator in his killing was jealous rage, and that's why he's hitting the couples on Lover's Lane and other places, could it be possible that this guy finally was able to meet a woman who we fell in love with, if he could fall in love with anybody, but, but who fell in love with him? And she became like the good mother, I always say. And uh, we have a story where it conquers all, and this guy stopped murdering. What say you, Eddie? Um, it's, a, it's a reasonable explanation, a reasonable path to look at, because... Uh, you know, there's some reason he stopped killing. There, there's there's several possibilities. He could be in jail, could be dead, could move out of the country. You know, there's a lot of possibilities. But one of them that's um, in the mix there is the uh, possibility he met a woman and, uh, you know, then started a relationship and that fulfilled most of his emotional, psychological needs, sexual needs. Um, so, um, you know, it's uh, uh, certainly possible, but we know that uh, from other cases that they, they can cool off for a while, but they often do go back at some point um, to you know, keep the pattern going there. They may take... Uh, you know, break, as we know, for years, sometimes many years, they could take a break. But uh, uh, from all indications, uh, that was, you know, he stopped, you know, with the after the cab driver was killed. And uh, oh. that was many, many years ago. Yeah, from all indications, he stopped cold after the cab driver. Frank, what say you? 
Well, I, I don't think we know that he stopped. Right. Okay. What, what uh, you know, there, there are several things that could have happened. He could have been institutionalized. He could have committed suicide. He could have gone to another country, to another state. What, what happened um, after the, the murders that we know he, he um, perpetrated is that at, at some point um, he wanted to be secret about um, his future killings. And so he just got off the radar. And, you know, and that's possible. He, he did come back after it every once in a while, um, indicating that he was still around. But, um, um, you know, that could have been Frank, you there? The other thing I believe is that the aging process is the reason for stopping mm -hmm. in some of these cases. They simply get old. They're, they're unable to perpetrate the kind of crime that they want to want, want to perpetrate, and they don't want to be caught. Mm -hmm. When you look at when you look at this, uh, you know, this stopping. You know, there are a number of reasons. There's no question about it. And we've seen it. You've seen it up close and personal with Gary Ridgway. Gary Ridgway didn't stop killing, but he really slowed down compared to being on fire the way he was in the beginning. Okay, we saw that with Green River. What about BTK? We've seen that with BTK where a relationship came up and then... Pretty much, you know, he's he cooled off for about seven, eight, maybe more years. Okay, we saw the cooling off period with the Unabomber. What would, what would be your best guess, Frank, or three best guesses on why he stopped, or why he cooled off? We don't know for sure he stopped, but why he might have cooled off. My best guess is that um, he probably didn't cool off. Uh, I, I just think he went underground. And, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, like I say, primarily, from my perspective, he didn't want to get caught. But I, I, I don't think that he necessarily stopped. Now, that doesn't mean that he couldn't have been incarcerated for a period of time. You know, um, I've had cases where... Um, the guy murdered two women and he disappeared and um, he ended up in a jail in a state far away, got out of that that um, jail and um, before he killed someone else, um, someone turned him in and we were able to solve that crime. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different possibilities here and, and with with this killer, this Zodiac, you know, um, uh, you know, he's learning, like I say, when, when, he, when he killed the cab driver, he didn't go out and do anything that stupid again. So uh, that, that really indicated to me that he didn't want to be caught. Yeah, and he was seen. See, that, that's the fear we talk about, too. He was seen, and he was extremely fearful. Okay, we're going to, as we know... You know, the Zodiac sent out a cipher, and the first one was pretty easily cracked by a couple um, that just spent a weekend on it, knocked it right out, and, and knew exactly what he was talking about. On one of the ciphers, or the last cipher, I forget which one it is to me, you know, what's no, the, it hasn't ever been cracked. We believe, at least we surmise, that it's uncrackable because there's actually nothing there, that it's all BS, okay? And, you know, if it's all BS, how can you crack it except to say there's nothing there? But I wanted to find out what you guys think about this guy's 
extreme narcissistic personality and about the cipher possibly being him knowing how narciss narcissistic these guys are the the uh, cipher being about him and what i mean by that is if we take a look at this guy's attacks we got lake herman we've got an attack on lake herman road we've got an attack on blue rock springs we've got an attack at Lake Berryessa, and then we have an attack at the Presidio Heights. All of these have water around them. All of these are water focused. Lake Kerman, Blue Rock Springs, there's a lake there, Lake Berryessa, Presidio Heights on the coast, the Navy. I mean, this is, is this his cipher? Is this who he's telling us he is? You know, we believe he's very familiar with the areas, as we said earlier. Could this be a possible cipher or um, a some kind of Freudian slip or something he's unconscious even about or consciously portraying as some kind of cipher? that through his actions at these various areas, he is trying to play a game with the public law enforcement, but he's telling us who he really is. In other words, somebody to work at the Presidio in some capacity, and that was his final act, figure out who I am. Frank, how about you? Well, <laughs> I... Uh... I think he. I think he's definitely plays with the police as much as he possibly. In fact, the last cipher hasn't been cracked. Um, may indicate what you what you said that it was all nonsense. Or it may be that he was learning as he went along and making the ciphers more difficult as he went along. Um, so anything is possible. Any Anything is possible. Now, Frank, I want to take you back because you broke up on us a little bit there, okay? I want to take you back to the beginning. Would you uh, talk about you know, the beginning of your answer, would you talk about, you know, uh, these areas he was familiar with, his attacks, and that possibly being, you know, some type of cipher or exactly what you meant in the beginning, because you broke up on this. Well, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I think he picked those areas, all of those areas, in, except the one in San Francisco, because they were remote. And, you know, it, it, um, it allowed him to get away with what he was doing without being witnessed, without the police dropping by. Um, and as you can see in the, in the San Francisco cabbie thing, the police did drop by. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um the, the the fact is that there are water at all of those locations but you know pretty much uh a, when when you're in an urban area um places that you can um go to uh, relax um or the parks generally have water the lakes that are close you know, or other places that you can go that you 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 have at least um, some sense of maybe other people not being there. Um, uh, and in in his case, he was focusing on uh, couples, lovers, and so um, and 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 again, they're 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 quiet places um, that 
um, for that reason, and, and they're lovely places in some sense, um, that's why people go there and, and, and park. What say you, Dr. Mursky? Well, um, I'm just thinking about the concept of uh, like the geographical profile. If you look at all these locations, and uh, we've every in many previous cases, we found that you know all the, uh, the the crime locations where the the perpetrator lives right in the middle, right? They live right almost smack in the middle of uh, you know where all the crimes were committed. So, um, so that's one angle to still look at too, um, the geographical profile. But in terms of the encryption. Yeah, the last one is is still basically a mystery. No one's, as far as we know, no one's cracked it. It could be gibberish. It could be that that could have been his intention, just to keep people focused on him and focused on his, uh, um, you know, ability to do that to, uh, to to mislead, deliberately mislead uh, the police and other encryptionists. Um, or maybe it really was a, a masterpiece of some kind, like a uh, Mona Lisa, and no one's been able to do it yet. <laughs> uh, you know, just to uh, maybe someday somebody will. And that, that, I guess, what you're asking, could that be a, a significant clue to who he is? Um, maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, but I said, the guy really doesn't want to get caught. No one really wants to get caught so uh, he he's probably um you know just getting teasing and taunting um but you know he might in even in his his uh, alleged brilliance he might make a mistake and he could uh you know lead us to him as like the btk did right he thought he was clever he went to the church and said i'm going to use the church computers and i'll never they'll never believe uh, a serial killer is going to originate from a church, you know. Like so, he, he was wrong. <laughs> they uh, got him, but uh, but that was his thinking that uh, you know I'm a you know there you know, somebody from the church cannot be considered a suspect. You know, so See, they're all they're they're all brilliant until they make a dumb mistake. Yep, and, some, then, uh, and then they're not brilliant anymore because they're in a cage. Journey. Yep. Okay. Well, the last segment I want to ask about the last hit, something that's been bothering me, and this is the final one. Lake Berryessa. This guy goes off pattern. Before Lake Berryessa, he's killing couples in lovers' lanes or rural areas, and at night. Pretty much, here comes this guy in the daytime, walking down a hill, Lake Berryessa, towards a couple. He's got a big hood on, and he's coming down there with a gun and a knife, and he's going to tie them up. He's probably using the gun to control them, but once he gets them tied up, then he's going to use the knife to kill them, and that's what he did. However, the thing that jumps out at me is, why... Be so careful in the daytime. I mean, why even do it to begin with? But that's how these guys get caught. They always, you know, uh, add on to their bets. They always multiply their bets and multiply their risk. And they're as soon as they exaggerate the risk, a lot of times they get caught. He got away with this. But wearing, wearing the hood at Lake Berryessa, he knows he's going down there to kill those two people, so they're not going to be able to say what he looks like. But I think he's concerned about other people on the lake. And some of them may know him and could identify him. I mean, that's something that's really bugging me. I think he could have been known for a long period of time by other people like Barry Essa. But by wearing the hood, nobody's really going to know who he is. And he, he's taking the risk off the table. Frank, what do you think? 
I think that it's very possible that he'd been at that lake several times, that he's been seen by other people there several times, that it's possible that someone that saw him before does in fact know him and he knows them. And so he's just, and, and he, he's doing this in daylight you know, I, he may have followed these kids even to the lake earlier. So yeah, he, he, he may, you know, he, he maybe picked this daylight time because he thought it's the time I can get at these kids. Um, Good and, point. Good point. And, uh, you know, the, the possibility at this lake, he may live close to this lake or he may have access to this lake in some way that, um, you know, we don't know, but it, it's very possible that someone around that lake at some point knew him and he's taking precautions against that. He's also wanting to be very symbolic though. And in yeah. the daylight, you know, he's taken the night away and he needs to cover himself in the daytime uh, to be obscure as, as it were. At night he can be obscure he can use the flashlight, the blind people. He can, you know, uh, he, he doesn't park his car in San Francisco um, close to um, where he's perpetrating the the act on the cab, cabbie. So he's 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 taking precautions, and so he does this all the time. This is the way he, he thinks. He's he's thinking about what are what are the eventualities here. And in daylight, the eventuality is that someone can see you. They, they maybe maybe they maybe it's sim as simple as that they'll be able to give a good sketch of him, you know, not just a a, a uh, and you know and 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 not the person that he intended to kill. It it could be someone else that just happens there. Somebody it's, on a boat. Yeah, and in, in daylight you can see him and and you can describe him pretty well. It may be as simple as that, too. Yeah. Andy, what say you? Well, I think Frank summarized it very well, but uh, you know, it is it is kind of strange to, obviously, you, you do call a lot of attention. I think you kind of mentioned you're wearing this this hood. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if you're a fairly normal person, you're going to be looking at that and staring at it, but you don't know who it is. I guess that's the objective to hide his face. You can get a sense of maybe a, a height or a weight or uh, you know some other characteristics, but you but the face would be the most important, uh, and and that's what he wanted to hide. Um, so I, I imagine detectives uh, did ask people uh, after the crimes. I imagine they did ask people to come forward, right? But that's the Typical police investigation. Now, did is there anything at all you could help us with? And maybe even his gait. You know, maybe even uh, I said just the height, uh, a weight, and even the other clothes. What kind of sneakers? You know, white sneakers, black sneakers. Um, um, that could have been helpful, but uh, um, he but he clearly wanted to um, um, hide his face, and because. Um, you know, if there were people that saw him, they would uh, they could construct a pretty good, um, you know, uh, profile. So, um, and that was all, you know, like I said, his sophistication, like we mentioned, uh, pre pre planned, and uh, um, he had you know, intentions of uh, um, you know, shifting the odds greatly in his favor of getting away uh, with the crime. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. We're going to stop there. I just want to uh, thank our viewers for uh, watching this video. Um, we we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have some viewers watching. We can't thank them enough for all their participation, for all their comments, uh, for how they like stock and follow stock. Uh, over the years, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of really great fans, 
we want that to continue. And uh, for John Kelly Profiler, thank you so much. And uh, we will uh, be talking to you soon. Please send us your comments and let us know how you feel about this. Thank you so much. Have a great day and stay safe out there. Okay.